Um, so, hello. I today am going to do a plant that uh, was in our list from that we collected last week. Um, as you can see, I have Zia again, who's very talkative. So hopefully you can understand what I'm saying while she also assists with my teaching. Um, the plant that we're going to focus on today is actually a couple of plants that are very closely related and we're going to do um, a, we're also going to explore some other plants that are similar but are not actually that closely related. So, the plants that we're going to talk about today are called sorrel, and that's S-O-R-R-E-L. Oh, some of you are excited. Some of you know about sorrel already. <laughs> that's great. Cool. Um, so I'm going to show you, it's a little bit dim where I am right now, um, but I'm going to show you some of what sorrel looks like so you can see size, the size of it in my hand. So. This is a big sorrel leaf. It's about the biggest that I could find in my garden. The uh, Latin name, I believe, is Rumex acetosa, R-U-M-E-X. And this is another one um, that I wanted you to see. You can see the bottom of it with these cool pointy, it has like an arrow-shaped leaf, more or less, like a, a blunt arrow, and the bottom has these pointy things on it. Oh yeah, look at you, sorrel, those are seeds, right? Sorrel seeds, cool, that's awesome. Mm. And the other plant that <coughs> I wanted to compare to is um, its wild cousin or its wild relative that it comes from. Oh, Zia just tried it. Ooh. Is uh, referred to as sheep sorrel, and it's very tiny. <laughs> See, I like sorrel. Mm. So, what does sorrel taste like? Does anybody want to tell me in their own words what sorrel tastes like? Yeah, I thought you might want to tell me. Yeah, what's it taste like? Delicious, really good, and kind of sourish. Delicious, really good, and kind of sourish. Does it taste like anything else that you can like that you can think of that you like to eat? Sour apple. Sour apple, kind of. Sour apple, yeah, cool. So some people that um, I used to work in Philadelphia with kids all the time. I used to do a bunch of garden field trips and teach them about plants in a garden that I used to tend all the time. And uh, in Philly, the kids ended up mostly calling them lemon leaves um, because they thought that they tasted like lemons. Like lemon, you know, when they bit into it, it was like this sour, like lemonade kind of flavor. Um, so that's what I always think of. I think of lemon leaves when I look at my sorrel. Um, so these are both the garden sorrel with the big leaves and the sheep sorrel with the small leaves are very, very closely related, and they're in the same family. Uh, the family is called Polygonaceae. So that's spelled P-O-L-Y-G-O-N-A-C-A-E, C-E-A-E. -E. I'm gonna put it in the chat so you can see it because that probably just confused you all. Polygonaceae. Cool, Liv, I just saw your chat. You watched A Permaculture Perspective, a documentary? Awesome, that's cool. We should talk about that at the end of this class. Um, so the Polygonaceae family, I'm gonna show you a botanical drawing of sorrel, and then we'll talk a little bit about the Polygonaceae family, which is a big family uh, that's been recognized by the scientific community for a really long time. Sometimes scientists disagree about whether, you know, something belongs in one family or another, and they, like, they'll have their own opinions about things and whether they're right or other people are right. But basically, 
this polygonaceae family that sorrel is a part of is um, characterized by its nodes. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Uh, so it's nodes where the leaves pop out here are very characteristic of all plants in this family. There is another plant that's very common, but it's considered like a really crazy weed in our area that's called uh, Japanese knotweed. And that is also in this Polygonaceae family. Um, and another plant that's in this family is rhubarb. And I'm sure, have you heard of rhubarb? It's a pretty common garden vegetable, a perennial uh, vegetable that people, um, people eat the stalks of it, the stems of it, this, this part. Um, rhubarb is one of the first things that pops out of the ground. Maybe we'll do that in another plant lesson um, pretty soon because my rhubarb plant is getting pretty big and I could harvest from it and we can talk about things that you can, some recipes for it and stuff like that. Um, so it, they also all have this sort of seed pattern, right? This, this long, they like put up these long flower stalks from their base. Um, in the beginning of the season, like my sorrel plant, so you see what the seeds look like. I'm going to show you a little bit what my, like what my sorrel plant looks like. In the early spring, it looks more like this. Do, do, do. And it just shoots out, like mine is really pretty bushy right now, but it's not very big. But all the leaves come out in this like big circular, like rosette form. And then once it starts to get a little bit warmer, um, they shoot up that flower stalk with the seeds that pop out at the end um, in a big, in that big, like bushy kind of formation. Um, do you have a question in there? No, just playing, I'm just doing what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, you have a question. Um, I thought sorrel, um, looks like, um, has, um, like three leaves, like a three-leaf clover, it looks like, and it tastes lemony. So that is, I'm really glad that you said that. So that's the other plant that I wanted to talk about today that is actually not that closely related to these two sorrels. So the importance, it's really important, remember I told you at the beginning of this that the Latin name of this plant is Rumex, Rumex acetosa. So I can type that in the chat too. Rumex acetosa, boop, is the Latin name. Um, and then the uh, other one, this little guy, sheep sorrel, is another Rumex, um, I'm gonna have to look it up because I, it's almost exactly the same name, but slightly different. And I forgot. Oh yeah. Rumex acetosella. So the little guy actually has a longer name and it's Rumex acetosella here. Boop. So that's the top one is the garden sorrel and the second one is the uh, the wild sheep sorrel. So the plant that you're talking about with the three leaves that looks kind of like clover has almost the exact same flavor in the leaves and it's another wild weedy plant that's called wood sorrel and it's not in the same family. So the these like I said are in the polygonaceae family and the wood sorrel, I have a picture of, um, is actually in its own, it's kind of in its own family for some reason. There's only five plants in this particular uh, plant family. Um, they have, apparently the scientists are having trouble finding other plants to compare it to. Um, but this one here is the one you're talking about, right? Oh. Sorry, you're muted. The green one. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that with the with like the. But it's really small. It is really small. Yeah. So this doesn't give you a really great um, understanding of how small it is. It's probably about it's it's about the same size as this uh, little guy that I found in my garden. Very different looking, but it's about the same size. So and it's um, it has the reason that it. People call it sorrel. Common, a common, it's common name um, is because it has the same flavor and it has one of the same. Um, it has this the, a, a chemical in it in really high concentrations that in both of these plants uh, make it taste the same. Oh, Adair, you have your hand up. Hold on one second. Now, what's your question? Do you have a question? I really like sorrel. Um, you sometimes can find it in the woods and it's super yummy. Yes, you can sometimes find it in the woods. So do you find the the little the little leaves like I showed you, the ones that have look like arrows or the little mm. ones that look like hearts? Arrows. The ones that look hearts. like arrows. Yeah. No, the hearts. The oh, heart. The one like the the picture that I just showed you? Yeah. Yeah. So that that one people call that people call that sorrel. It's they call it wood sorrel, um, and it looks a lot like clover. It's it's often the first plant that uh, I, that I teach to kids when I'm teaching um, outside because it's usually all over the place and it's something that's easy to compare to regular clover. So people usually like they know what four leaf clovers look like because they're thinking about they you know they want to look up they want to look for four leaf clovers because that's a super fun thing to do outside. And then they see these other things that look kind of like clovers, but their flowers are a different color and their leaf shape is actually a different color or different shape too. So I'm gonna look up a picture of a clover leaf just so we can so look at these they have heart shaped little leaflets right so this whole thing is one leaf but they have three leaflets and they all look like hearts right and their flowers are yellow they're very small and they're basically about this they're basically the same side size as white clover um and i'm gonna find a picture of white clover so now we can look at it um and compare The good thing about the the fact that these look so similar is that both of them are edible. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, if you are learning about plants and you accidentally identify the wrong plant, this is one that isn't dangerous because they're both edible. So that, can somebody um, raise their hand and tell me what's different about this? Uh, Jaden, is that why you have your hand up? Well, I had it for a little bit and then yes, the white clover looks smaller and it's white. Yeah, so the flower, the flower is white and the other one, the flower is yellow. Um, do we have, yeah, Liv, do you have other things that you can see that are different? Yeah, the fla the like um leaves are not heart shaped. They're just like circles. Mm hmm Yeah, so they're they're uh, basically in the same formation. So they're leaves with three little leaflets, but these leaflets are round. And this isn't really the best picture. I'm gonna find a more zoomed in photo for us. Um, so if you look at white clover leaves up really close, they're not completely smooth uh, the same way, in the same way that wood sorrel leaves are smooth. Um, maybe, well here's a good one too. So 
other kinds of white clover, I'm not finding very, very high quality images here. Um, other kinds of white clover are commonly have this other pattern inside the leaf. Can you see that? So they have this kind of like white pattern in the center. It's a really, really, they're, they're really pretty. Um, and that's something that you can also use to tell them apart. Um, they're usually about the same size, the leaves, in my experience. Um, and like I said, it's okay if you accidentally think that you found sorrel, but you found clover because both of them are edible. They're not, they're not poisonous. So you could actually just try, put a little leaf in your mouth and taste the difference. Um, and that would be kind of a cool thing to do too, as long as you find it in a place where you know that it's a, uh, it's a kind of far away from the road and that sort of thing. Um, Jaden, what's your question? We have white clover, red clover, and red leaf so sorrel. So red leaf sorrel? Yeah, and then we also have red clover and white clover. Cool, yeah, you, I, I have some of all of those too. I have really, really sandy soil in my backyard, so I don't get as many of those fun plants as I used to when I lived in the city. Because uh, red clover and white clover and the wood sorrel, the lemon leaves, um, used to, they grow all over the place. Um, in my backyard now, I have some wood sorrel, but it's so sandy that it mostly doesn't grow back there. But I feel lucky because I have a lot of, for some reason, the soil, uh, this sheep sorrel doesn't mind my soil here. So I have a ton of this growing, and that's pretty cool. Um, Liv, you have a question? Oh, ah! What does the clover like taste like? Does that also taste lemony or does it taste like different? Um, so regular clover has a very mild flavor. Um, I mean, you probably, it's a little bit sweet. Um, mostly I use the flowers of clover. So red clover is a really common medicinal plant and we can maybe talk about that in a different class. And white clover flowers can also be used in tea. So they're a little bit sweet. They have that, the flowers have that nectar, right? So it makes them a little bit sweet. And the leaves themselves themselves also um, are just a little bit sweet. They're definitely not sour the same way that sorrel is. So if you tried one and then the other, you would definitely be able to tell um, the difference. Um, so the reason why we have, um, the reason that the, the wood sorrel with the heart-shaped leaves and the garden sorrel and the sheep sorrel have the same flavor is this, because they have uh, the same large, um, they have a large quantity of the same chemical in them and the chemical is called oxalic acid. So I'm going to type that in our chat too. Oxalic is O-X-A-L-I-C acid. So oxalic acid is very common. It's a very common chemical in many, many of our most nutritious greens, our most nutritious vegetables. Spinach has a lot, kale has a lot, collard greens, Many of our many of our most common beets, uh, Swiss chard, um, and the plants in this Polygonaceae family, uh, many of them have uh, even higher quantities of oxalic acid, quantities that are so high that in some of the plants, it, it we actually talk about them being toxic. So um, oxalic acid in really high quantities, like way higher. Um, you, in order to have a bad reaction to this plant, you would need to eat so much of it that you would probably get sick even before it, the oxalic acid made you sick. Does that make sense? So there are some plants that have um, the rhubarb plant that I was talking to you about. Rhubarb, we eat the stalks of the rhubarb plant 
but we don't eat the leaves because the leaves of the rhubarb plant have so much oxalic acid that if we accidentally ate too much, we could get sick. But these, um, we steam them, we cook them, we eat them like in a little bit in salads. It's so sour that you wouldn't be able to eat so much of it that it would actually make you sick. So you'd have to eat like three cups, four cups, that's like a ton of these leaves. Um, but it's important to know that oxalic acid in high quantities, if you eat a ton of this stuff all the time, like if you were someone that was making sorrel smoothies every day, or you were juicing sorrel, or you were, you know, every single morning, and you were just having like packing a ton of leaves into a blender and, or into a juicer, and you were drinking all that juice, that would be too much. And eventually that would make you sick. Um, but that is the flavor, that sour flavor is from that high concentration of oxalic acid. Um, it's something that you'll probably hear about um, in, as you're growing up, as you're learning about plants, you're probably going to hear that, that oxalic acid. You're going to hear about that a lot. Um, if you learn about, if you get into like nutrition with various veggies and stuff like that, it's, it's something that you'll, you'll learn about a bunch of times. Um, yeah. Oh, what's your question? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to unmute you. There we go. Um. The sorrel I found, like the, um, the one that looks like clover, mm -hmm. um, it has these purple, it looks, it looks exactly like the green one, but it's per, it's like red. Yes. And it's bigger, too. It's a little bigger. Yeah, so I can, I'm going to pull up a picture that I... Is it red sorrel? So red sorrel is something, <laughs> it's sometimes... Red sorrel is different. So this here, is this kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So I actually remember in past, um, when I was talking about stinging nettle and when I was talking about lemon balm and other things in the mint family, I talked about how sometimes the leaves are purplish. So this is the same, this is for the, the same reason. Sometimes when it, it's like, really early spring or really late in the season, like it gets really cold. Sometimes these, the new plants, um, their leaves turn purple. And uh, sometimes there's different nutrient, there's nutrient differences in the soil that sometimes change the colors of the leaves, right? So that is a constant, the, that purple red color is a concentration of another word that I've used a couple times, the, the word being anthocyanin. So anthocyanins are these chemicals uh, that, that make the leaves and make fruits turn like purple or red or blue, like, like blueberries have a ton of that anthocyanin in them as well. And they're actually healthy uh, compounds for humans. They're, they're called antioxidants and they're healthy, um, they keep us healthy. Um, yeah, what's your question? So, can we eat that? Can you eat the purple wood sorrel? Yeah. Yes, you can eat the purple wood sorrel. It's just as, it's exactly the same. It's the, the exact same species as the one, the other one that I showed you. It's just in slightly different conditions. So, sometimes the, depending on the conditions that, that these plants are in, they grow a little bit differently. So, for example, in my yard, my really sandy soil, which also is kind of an acidic soil rather than a basic soil, the acid in my soil and the sand in my soil make it so that it's hard for a lot of things to grow. Um, and a lot of times the weedy plants that volunteer in my yard that come up by themselves are smaller. Their leaves are smaller, their flowers are smaller, the whole plant is kind of stunted um, in my yard in a different way than when I find the same species of plants in other places. So in other places where the soil is kind of healthier or more, there's um, more of a healthy balance in the soil, um, the, the plants are bigger or different colored, the flowers are bigger, the leaves are bigger, because they have, they're getting more 
uh, nutrients, they're getting more, usually more water uh, and that sort of thing, more oxygen from the soil in other places. Adair, you have a question? Yeah. Um, why are um, some plants um, like round leaves and some plants like ovular? You mean penne, Adair? Like penne or? Um, so do you, yes. mean, do you mean the same, the same species of plant? Like, do you mean yeah. why, why does some of the same species plant have different shaped leaves? Yeah. That's a good question. So I think it's, it's similar, it's similar to what I was just saying, like, Sometimes, depending on how much sunlight um, is getting, like how much sunlight a plant is getting or how much, uh, how many nutrients are in the soil with the, the nitrogen and the phosphorus and the potassium and these things that we have, that, that plants need to get from the soil in order to grow healthy and strong. Sometimes they don't get that. Sometimes, and, and really the variation, if there's just like a little bit of a change in the leaf, like maybe one leaf is more oval than you're used to, or maybe a little bit more heart-shaped than you're used to. Sometimes that's just what happens over time when these plants kind of, they, they move to different places and they become, um, they kind of become their own, their own thing, right? So they say they're the same species, they have the same genes, um, but they just kind of look a little different, kind of like you and your brother, right? Like you are in the same family, you're very, very closely related, you have the same parents, but you look a little bit different. And that's how these uh, lots of plants kind of are the same way. They have to just like make their own shape to fit their environment. Jaden, you have a question? Yes. How are you talking about the clovers and stuff like that? The uh, sorrel? Are all of those edible or is that just certain types? Mainly the sorrel, then. So, yeah, all of these sorrels that I talked about, this sheep, the little guy, this sheep sorrel here, that's a kind of like a weed in my garden. And then this one, which is our garden sorrel, that's much bigger that I'm growing on purpose. They are, and the wood sorrel with the heart-shaped leaves, they are all edible. Um, cool. white, white clover, red clover is also edible. They're, they're different, they're in a different species and in a different family, um, but, they, but you can eat them. Um, and some of the, yeah? I think red clover sometimes tastes like candy the the flower yeah yeah the flower um has it has the the nectar in it right the nectar that bees really like when they're um when they're pollinating they um ha it, it's that like sweet sugary flavor is what we get to taste too i i think so too i like it a lot um I want to talk, so one of the ways that people really like to eat sorrel, so a lot of times, you know, you, you can put it in salads or you can cook it um, in like small, smaller quantities. You can add it, you can add it to salads. You can add it to like spinach if you're like steaming vegetables. Um, a lot of people also like to use it kind of like an herb. So they use a little bit of this sour stuff as a, to add that like extra flavor. Um, sometimes uh, people, a lot of times like to add the, that lemony sour flavor to fish dishes. Um, a vegetarian option of something that I really, really like is called potato sorrel soup. So people will take potatoes and um, sorrel and leeks or onions, garlic, um, and other types of, you know, your, your common garden herbs, 
and make a make a soup with that and you can use a vegetable stock to make it vegetarian if you don't if you don't you're not worried about being vegetarian you can use a chicken stock and um sometimes people use heavy cream or half and half also to make it like a thicker creamier thing um or butter um depending on on what types of diets you all have um but potato sorrel soup is really really yummy it's creamy um you can make if you if you really like garlic, you can make garlic creamy too. If you don't want to have like a dairy any dairy in your in your soup, and I can put a link in the video to an easy. So some of my friends work for this company called the Fruit Guys, and they have this potato sorrel soup recipe on their website. Um, I'm putting this in the chat and then uh, I'll share it with you so you can see the website too from my screen. So this is just an easy potato sorrel soup uh, from a local farm. It's a recipe from a local farm. Potatoes, sorrel leaves, garlic, butter, thyme, vegetable stock, and salt and pepper. It's very, very easy and you just cook them down um, for a little while and then you use a blender to blend them up and if you don't have a blender you don't even have to do that it's really yummy it's hearty and uh, like I said some people use it with fish dishes it's kind of like a way that you can get that lemony flavor anytime you would use lemon in a recipe um, just like as a garnish uh, as an as a little additive um, Adair you have a question uh, yeah um, we found this. Is it in the mint family? We saw that it had a square stem. Oh, okay. So it's not, wait, let me see the bottom. Um, and let me see the leaves. Yeah, okay. That, I believe that is in the mint family. That is a plant called purple dead nettle. Um, or some people call it hen, hen bit nettle. I'm going to pull up a picture of it and I'll show you just so we can make sure it's the right one. Let me see. I just want to make sure I'm right of it being in the mint family. Yeah. So that family, uh, I'm just going to, I just pulled up the Wikipedia really fast and I'm going to share, I'll share my screen with you so you can see it. Purple dead nettle is super common. Is that the same one? Here, let's find a, a big picture. Does that look like the one that you have? Yep. There you go. So yeah, purple dead nettle is in the mint family. That The mint family is Lamiaceae. Remember, it means like mouth. So when it flowers, it has these kind of little mouth-like purple flowers on it. The leaves are kind of purpley and green down at the bottom and they have a square stem. So that's really awesome. I'm happy that you that you remembered that and that you learned that when you saw that plant. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, good job. Yeah, question? I have that all over my home. Yeah, it's really common where we are in our area. It's common, <laughs> it's common all over the place. Um, Hannah, is it edible? It is. So I've never eaten it. Um, and I don't want to give you guys the wrong, like wrong information. I, I know that there are some people that do eat it, but since y'all are kids, it's really important that you and your parents look up um all about its nutrition. Cause it I don't think it tastes very good, but it's I it's not poisonous. I know some people add it to, to salads and stuff, but you probably wouldn't want to eat it or eat very much of it. Um, but make sure. Can what I make a tea out of it? Mm, maybe. I don't really know. Um, maybe we should do a little bit of research and we can talk about it for a few minutes tomorrow. All right. Yeah, I, I know it's very common, but I haven't done a whole lot of work, um, a whole lot of research about it. So I don't want to give you bad information. Yeah. Um, can you write the name in the chat? Yeah. Do you want the Latin name or the common name? Uh, both. Okay. And I only have a couple more minutes in this call. Okay, the, co the, the common name is most often referred to 
as purple dead nettle, which isn't a very nice name, but that's what its most common name is. Um, and then its Latin name is Lamium uh, purpureum, which means something like purple mouth or something like that, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, maybe you can look that up and figure out what you can do with it um, tonight or sometime this week and we can talk about it. Does that sound good? If you have it in your yard and stuff? I only have one minute left, so, oh, Jaden, what's your question? You privately did that to me. Oh, no, I did that privately. That was an accident. This is a <laughs> thing. <laughs> I you. just found that out. Bloop. There we go. <laughs> so that's to everyone. Purple dead nettle and lamium purpureum. Yeah, Baron, what's your question? Well, it's not really a question, but I have a suggestion for sure. like next time. Yeah. About Indian plum. Indian plum? Whoa, I don't know anything about that. You can eat it and it's super yummy. Cool. Well, I'm going to look it up and then I will let you know if I feel, I don't, I don't know that much about it and I don't want to teach you guys things that I don't really know anything about. But I'll look it up and maybe we can do a thing about plants that are related to it and we can, we can what? increase that. How about that? All right, y'all. My meeting time is almost up. Yeah, yeah, what's, okay, what's, ah! I what? found a picture of it. It's yeah, Indian plum? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll look it up and we'll do something, we'll do something about like the plant family that's, that it's a part of. And that's a berry or something. Yeah. Thanks for your suggestion. And I'm going to say goodbye for now because I'm out of time.